Hello, welcome to another Tunnelist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today is a, um, let's just call it a cover. It's like a cover song. It's a cover painting after Leon Roche, and I'll get into what's up with that in a minute. Um, first, though, I'd like to say uh, I am painting on a bit of hardboard and it's been primed with two layers of uh, transparent gesso and then sanded lightly. Uh, and then I actually rub it down with a little oil before I start painting too. And uh, you can see that whole, not you can see the whole oil process and uh, things like that. Um, if you uh, look at this painting in the members area. Now in the members area, um, this painting is the full two hour session and you're live, you're there, you're a fly on the wall. Uh, we're basically painting together, yeah. Um, and the, uh, let's see, the color I'm painting uh, with is a mixture of black and brown ochre. And um, brown ochre is a very interesting color. In fact, it just give me a brain hiccup. That's why I had to re record this a second time. I'm going, brown what? Brown what? Um, you got your raw umber, you got your yellow ochre, and you got your brown ochre, right? Uh, the brown ochre that I... I'm using is a uh, Winsor Newton brown ochre and um, it's a bit lighter than the one I was using which was uh, from Old Holland so I've added some black and I'm real happy with it it's a great color so just letting you know what's happening there so what do I mean by cover it's not even yes it's kind of a study but it's more like say if you were to do uh, Eleanor, Eleanor Rigby as a polka you know Yes, you're doing Eleanor Rigby, but the style's not the same, the tempo's not the same, you know. Maybe the key's even been changed, you know. Maybe you've only borrowed parts of it. That's what I've done with Leon's painting. Um, I basically replaced Leon's sky with a sky I found way more attractive. And um, that's the main and significant change I made, but it was very significant change because it totally gave the painting a, a, a very different feeling and cast. So now I don't have a problem doing this because um, musicians have been doing it forever. And why uh, painters don't do it, I don't know, but I do. And I'm giving you permission to do the same if you like. Now, um, in I will, uh, in my blog post, it'll be underneath this video, there'll be a corresponding blog post. Um, I'll put I'll put a copy of his original there. I'm probably not going to put a copy of my adjusted um, version, the, my, my actual reference image. But if you wanted to see that, all you have to do is uh, join the members area. So, and Yeah, the other thing you'll uh, see in the members area is a... Uh, color mixing session. So I'll break the uh, reference image down um, into, you know, it could be up to 14 colors. Most of the time it's around 10 different colors and I'll mix them and I explain what colors go into the mix and it's kind of just a, uh, no, it's not the only way those colors could be mixed, but it's the way that I mixed them. So that's to just give people that insight. And you know, I have tried integrating that with these 15 minute videos, but it just seems to drag the proceedings down. So, uh, and gosh knows, I, I, there's other people on YouTube that may have. Actually, there's a lot of different ways of, of approaching this process. But um, the way I do my 15-minute videos is that you get to watch the painting happen, and, and I'll generally throw a few tips your way. Yeah. So all that said, um, you're up to speed with uh, where we're at on this painting, and we're going to get into some other topics and. Um, topic, first topic, maybe two topics, we'll see. First topic, we'll see how, how long uh, this goes. First topic is, um, you know, having a rough day, failing, uh, or maybe just not knocking one out of the park. Now, I have to say, as a painter that's been doing this for a long time, I have a lot less failures than I used to. Um, but I still, I still fail, I still do paintings that aren't, aren't coming off. And uh, I want to give you some insights into just that whole process for me uh, because I remember it certainly happened a lot more and there were things that I would do to get around it um, and that I do do to get around it um, so it doesn't happen that often because it's painful, right? I mean, when we want to 
we do a painting when we want it to be great and um, or at least good good or great or amazing those are the things we want and there's nothing wrong with that obviously though if you're starting out it's going to take um it take a while for you to to be great consistently because you really have to work your way through all of the uh, myriad ways that um, there are to screw up and painting is hard um, and easy to screw up so you got to make those screw ups you've got to do it so um, let's talk about now you're not looking in fact no one may ever see the painting I did today because uh, I'm going to review the video and see if I think it's redeemable but I remember um, not loving it when I left the studio today. So what was the process? Now I can, I've got hindsight. It's 2020. Well, I had issues with the initial reference. That's the first thing. Really watch out for that. And um, in my experience, it's quite difficult if you have issues in the reference to save it in the painting session. And even knowing this, I decided to proceed. But before I, um, you know, did that, I took it into Photoshop and I tried to fix some of the issues I saw in Photoshop. Now I could have just made this, the, the, by the way the reference was uh, today, um, an old pictorialist uh, CPF photo and it had some things I really liked about it, these vertical trees I like to do and um, really strong uh, but it had other problems like the background was super vague and I basically made up a fake background. Um, and I, I think the painting kind of suffered because everything got oversimplified and just whatever. But like I said, I'll be looking at it. I just want to share with you my process. So initially, I probably should have just not gone after that reference. Um, I should have just kept looking for some reference that was going to be more solid. Um, so I didn't listen to my intuition. I didn't listen to that inner voice. Okay. And that continued even after I spent maybe 20 minutes or so in Photoshop trying to kind of fix these problems. And when I work in Photoshop with an image, I don't try and make it perfect. You know, I just try and kind of ha hash something out. I get something into some shape. And even there I thought, oh, this is, yeah, this is hanging fire. This isn't quite right. And, um, I did record that video, but will I put it up? We'll see. This is the kind of thing you actually really get in the members area because I'm talking about this painting as I'm uh, I'm doing it in the members area. And um, there's lots of times in the members area where I do have, uh, it's a rough going, but I managed to pull it out or save it. You know, it's, it's good. Anyway, we've got to keep. Uh, oh, by the way, there's a, a nice new feature uh, in YouTube. It's called that thank you feature. You click on that, you can send me money if you uh, really appreciate um, what I'm doing here and you feel like helping me out with my journey as a, a painter. And I, I, I so much appreciate. I, I appreciate you just watching. I really do. It's great. I know you got to get through maybe a couple ads and things. but uh, And the people that are members, you guys are tops, you know. Thanks for helping me. I really appreciate it. Anyway, so then there's all there's all that, but then you're once you got the paint on the board, the board's gonna be you know it's ruined. Um, of course, you can also slap a coat of paint over the top, and I probably will do that to a couple others in my studio I've been looking at. Um, you know, so you don't have to absolutely waste the board. I'll scrape it down with a palette knife and just lay a coat of, uh, you know, some kind of brown over the top, let it dry, and then do a completely different painting over the top. And my, <laughs> I think that's cool because uh, in the future, you know, if, uh, if I'm ever uh, famous, um, you know, which who knows what the odds of that are, but uh, they can, they can x-ray it and they'll see the bad painting underneath the good painting and they go, ah, oh, look at this. Yeah, it was going to be a teddy bear, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or something like that. <coughs> Anyway, I guess my point is, is like you could save yourself a lot of strife if you just listen to that inner voice saying, I don't know, you know, um, but okay, sometimes you may have that inner voice and you're able to, you're able to overcome, you're able to succeed, you're able to win in spite of the odds. And that's wonderful. Isn't it great? Um, and because that happens, 
there'll be uh, times that I won't listen to that intuition, but I can tell you that usually the intuition, the voice is right, and usually you'll work hard, um, but you probably won't succeed, you probably won't win. Now, these paintings can be okay. I mean, actually, the couple of things you can do with the paintings that aren't absolutely awesome. I think the Leon uh, Roche um, cover painting we're doing today came out really, really nice. It's a five by seven, by the way. And um, I'm really stoked with it. I just think it, it, it looks good, really good. And that's all down to um, the beautiful sky, you know. And uh, Leon's really, really thoughtful um, an excellent composition which I just grabbed. Now his trees had a bit of a different shape and feeling and when I do studies after the old masters or even a lot of the Barbizon guys I'll simplify those shapes. I don't like an edge uh, on the trees that looks real bloppy, you know, like there's a bunch of little leaves or whatever. That's not my thing. I try and get a certain feeling uh, that feels good to me and uh, I don't ever worry about him. Um, now I am, of course, b borrowing his his general tree shapes. So, and one thing I really noticed on this was that uh, I don't know if you remember uh, just a minute or two ago, looking at the drawing stage when I'm I'm drawing the big geometric abstract shapes. It really didn't look like it worked. But what what brought everything together on that main tree mass is when you put in those vertical um, tree trunks then everything came together and looked brilliant so there's that too um i didn't enjoy painting this uh, reflections i had to incorporate my new sky i'm actually we're looking at the sky now i'm super happy with where it came out um it's emotive it fits the uh colors of the painting um he has like these very interesting cool greens and uh you know, if you've got this far in the video, you deserve some tips. Like, how do you get that nice, cool green effect, Mike? Maybe you might ask me that. Well, I'm glad you asked. You know, okay, I would start with my Mike's green, which is um, a mixture of acrylamide yellow and or acrylide yellow. And acrylamides are something you get when you fry food. Acrylide yellow and um, black. And that gives me a very warm, earthy green that's extremely flexible. Um, in this case, I probably added a little bit of phthalo. You got to be cool with that phthalo, though. Um, the phthalo is going to cool it off. Um, actually, in this case, I believe I used phthalo blue because I didn't want that kind of icy green feel you can get, you know. So, um, but I balanced that. Here's the secret. Okay, that alone would have been kind of fake. So one of the ways that I make my greens look good is by throwing lots of reds in them, okay? And generally it would be a red like a burnt uh, sienna. It would be my favorite red to throw in a green to give it a natural feeling. Um, in this case, a little secret I'm passing on to you because you're, uh, you know, you're here, you're here with me hanging out at 13 minutes. Um, Alizarin Crimson, which was just the ticket, okay? It's cool. Um, it's dark and it makes the greens look natural okay we had a green that would have been sort of fake looking now for the highlight areas I brought in bits of orange into that mixture um, in some spots it worked better than others um, the other thing I brought in was yellow ochre which yellow ochre kind of has a great relationship with phthalo green they get on really well you know so anyway that's it for today's video hopefully you enjoyed uh, me burbling along and uh, if you did uh, you know oh this painting will be for sale in my store um, price on this uh, gonna be 150 US that's my 5 by 7 price and uh, that'd be good painting to buy I think it came out really nice um, I'll see lots of ways to support me you can become a member uh, you could just watch the videos and take in a couple ads. You can watch to the end. That really helps because they throw the videos at other people. Um, or this new uh, feature. I got my first one the other day. It was so awesome to get a tip. Uh, really made my day. So thanks for watching. And until I come back with another video, take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble. And God bless you and your family.